everyone, welcome back to Sex, Blood and Rock and Roll. I'm your host, Avelina Damore. How the fuck are you guys? It's good to see you again. And I'm really looking forward to sitting down and talking to you again. Today, we're going to cover an array of different topics, including sexting, <laughs> addictions, uh, fashion, what I'm wearing today. I'm really excited to talk to you about a new brand that I've fallen in love with. And we're going to talk about makeup. We're going to talk about merchandise. You can see here, I've got my little devil handbag that I'm going to show you today. It's cute as fuck. What books am I reading or listening to <laughs> on Audible? I want to share with you what I'm currently listening to. And we will speak about presents. Is it the new aphrodisiac? I don't mean present as in Christmas present, I said presents as in being present with someone. So let's start with some makeup. I've just got it sitting beside me. I forgot to do this in episode one. I wanted to speak about what I'm wearing in each podcast in case you guys like the shade or anything like that. So the lipstick I'm wearing today, liquid lipstick, is Rock Chick Rebel Revolution. The brand is Model Rock, an Australian brand, and this is called Bon Dutch. It's the most glorious color. I might come in a little closer. It's a lovely kind of plum purple. And I use the Alyssa Edwards eyeshadow palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's got a really interesting selection of colors there. I can't say I've been too game enough to try the fluoro yellow, but I should really try that. Mm, yeah, the purple is really strong and pigmented. Okay, let's get into sexting. Have you done it before? Um, have you regretted doing it? Has it turned out well? Uh, <laughs> you hear it more often than not about the stories that don't go well. <laughs> Unfortunately, I want to share one that I experienced personally with you. And it's more from the perspective of the pressure that I felt. It was subliminal pressure, but yeah, it was definitely there. And as a parent myself, it almost petrified me to think about the world that my children are growing up in and how easy it is now to be discreetly sexual. And what I mean by that is if, if you're just coming into your sexuality and you're 13, 14, 15, and you've got a smartphone, I mean, you can be doing crazy things without um, your parents knowing, your friends knowing, and like, it's really taking away the communal sense of sexuality and it's almost hidden and secretive. And I guess that's the, the part of it that I worry about in regards to children. So if you do have kids that are of that age, please take the message that I'm about to share with you, the story, and share it with them. I think it's a very important one. And me, like I'm obviously not a fucking teenager and I, I still felt this. So I was able to figure out that I wasn't happy with what was happening because I'm very aware of how I feel and say, no, like th this is fucked. <laughs> but imagine if someone uh, was just coming into this, their own self and their sexuality and didn't have that um, sovereignty, I guess, over, over their own this space and what is right or wrong yet it would be very easy to be manipulated especially if you're 13 and you're into like this really cute guy that's 16 or 17 that is just so much older than you yeah girls tend to want to impress you know this guy and they'll do anything and sometimes they'll do things that they don't want to do i've done that a lot of times and i mean that's it's all part of life you know so let me fucking get on with what the story was so i was talking to a guy for a few days Things got, you know, heated as it does. And I didn't ask for anything. And then I was sent a dick pic. <laughs> what does one say to that when you, you you don't even ask for it? Good job. Wow. Your mother should be proud. Like, I, I really didn't know how to react to it. And that wasn't the, the point of the story. The point of the story was what he said after he sent it. He's like, okay, so can you send yours now, please? And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? <laughs> computer says no and he's like well yeah i'd like to see your anatomy and i'm like yeah nah and he's like but if i've sent you mine and i was like dude i didn't ask for it it doesn't it's it's not a contract it doesn't mean i have to send you one back so there was that subliminal pressure that i felt where it was assumed that i was to do the same just because he'd sent it to me first and that really sat badly with me so much so that i just stopped talking to him and it, yeah, it was really distasteful in my mind as well. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against sexting at all. I think it needs to be done between two people of an appropriate age. And that's a whole other fucking can of worms. What, what makes someone appropriate? It has to be, yeah, the two parties <laughs> are on the same page and yeah, a level of trust. And I don't think you should be sharing your genitals with someone or photos that you've only known for like three days and you haven't met in person. There's so many things that could go wrong in that situation, especially for young people. Like if it's used incorrectly, you know, and it's put up on Facebook or something and it could be really used as a form of bullying that I think could be very detrimental to someone 
young and that is developing their sexuality. And I think it could go as far as stunting their sexual growth if that makes sense like yeah if you're humiliated through your body at such an important stage like during puberty by someone that you were attracted to god the fucking humiliation like i can't even imagine that at my age that would be absolutely petrifying yeah i guess what i'm just saying is uh just think before you send i'm not saying don't send if you do send have have a level of trust for that person and you can be cute you know and um suggestive without being overtly sexual as well and yeah i think there, there should be an air of caution that is attached to sexting my rule of thumb these days is to not send anything that i wouldn't be embarrassed about if it got leaked or yeah posted especially when i have like a, a business and a social media following yeah i don't I, Sorry, but I don't want photos <laughs> of um, me, the JJ, <laughs> thanks to Oprah, floating around on the internet. And the only way to safeguard that is to not send them. So please, yeah, have a little think about what I've just said. And if any of that resonates with you, just, uh, yeah, proceed with an air of caution. Moving on, addictions. Do you have any? What are yours? Comment down below. I definitely went through probably a year of consciously being aware that I was addicted to online shopping. It wasn't doing anyone harm and it wasn't like detrimental to my family. Like bills were paid, kids were fed, everyone was happy. I don't own credit cards. I've never used credit cards. I think I mentioned that in the first podcast. So everything was bought with my own money. And I definitely enjoyed the dopamine hit that would happen every day or every second day when my courier um, came and dropped a little present off. It was definitely a supplement for something else that I think was missing within perhaps in retrospect, my relationship that I was in at the time and where I was with myself, like my relationship with myself, everything was quite shallow. And I didn't see it as an addiction at the time until I'm like, wow, like, can I go a week without buying something? <laughs> and I guess that is the, the meaning of addiction, right? When you feel that need to do it and it's unexplained. So when I started to search deeper, I'm like, wow, okay, I'm kind of using it as a blanket to, to cover a grander issue. And once I, I consciously acknowledge that, I'm like, okay, why am I doing this? Because like, I'm feeling quite unhappy with my current situation. And I saw it from a different perspective. So there's my little story on um, addictions. What have you been addicted to? Has anyone had a sex addiction or a masturbation addiction or a stealing addiction? Look at like Winona Ryder. I mean, she's like, she doesn't need to steal, but it's the thrill of it. And she actually got caught. And I think she did it a few times more after that. So it shows you how strong they can be when uh, people are looking for that thrill. So yeah, I, what is your addiction? How do you handle it? And have you beat it yourself? Let's speak about this lovely cardigan that I'm wearing. It is this gorgeous red, scarlet red. I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. The brand is Mademoiselle X. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I know it's French, but the, the word doesn't seem to want to roll off my tongue. <laughs> So I hope I'm saying that correctly. I've been speaking with Paula, the owner, and she's lovely. And we got to talking about the possibility of a collaboration. So I'm really excited to share that with you. Okay, we are back. Another collaboration that I'm super excited to talk to you about is with Wickedy Whack, an Australian fragrance and candle brand. You may recall about two years ago, I did a collaboration with them and released a candle which sold out. I was completely <laughs> excited about that. And it was such a shame that the owner at the time couldn't get more of the scent that we had selected. So it wasn't an option to make more. So we are currently working on a new candle and might be releasing a duo set two in one. So I wanted to share some products that I've bought this week with you they're all organic and they smell amazing i have a friend that is completely organic down to the clothing that he wears the food that he eats um, the lifestyle is very holistic and he smells amazing <laughs> so i had to get some of these products this one is called hemp hair oil treatment i haven't tried them yet so i'm not going to talk about them too much but it smells like bananas to me it's just absolutely beautiful so i'm very keen to try that this one is Australian jojoba for face. I know I'm saying that wrong. Is it jojoba? Jojoba? Please don't punish me for saying it incorrectly. Just help me fix it. Um, yeah. Look at the packaging. I love that. So much thought has gone into that. It looks like um, sacred geometry. How the fuck did they even come up with that? It's just 
absolutely beautiful packaging. This is supposed to be used in replace of a moisturizer. It is an oil. So very excited to try that out and see if it uh, makes a difference to my skin. I don't have any issues with my skin. I'm just into trying new moisturizers. I got the Hemp Works Hemp Seed Oil Body Veneer. It's a moisturizing exfoliant. The main reason I got it is because it's got patchouli in it. And I love the smell of that. I got something from Bath and Body Works and it had patchouli in it and I just fell in love. And I really love light scrubs for exfoliating. The last thing I got was a hemp seed oil lip balm in lemon and mango. So I'm going to try these out and then I'll let you know what I think of them. I did mention in episode one that I did want to include a question and answer section within this podcast. So if you do have one for me, please put it in the comments below and I will go through them. Let's go on to what books I'm reading at the moment. Do you read yourself? Do you listen to podcasts? What do you do to kind of chill out? Do you have a regimen or routine before you go to bed? I definitely do. It involves stepping away from my phone, turning that shit on silent, listening to a podcast usually, or listening to an ebook, and then meditating before bed. I found that over the last year, I've had zero problems falling asleep. I did go through a very, very intense and dramatic uh, change in my life two years ago. I separated from my husband. I you know, had a miscarriage, which is traumatic in itself. Um, I was sick. I was in hospital for a little while. So coming out of that, I, um, I really fell out of alignment in more ways than one. And one of them was uh, how I fell asleep or the ease in which I fell asleep. It was so um, normal for me to not go to sleep that it, it kind of became a self-fulfilling prophecy and it turned into anxiety where I delayed going to sleep because I knew I was going to have troubles falling asleep and I did eventually end up going on sleeping pills which I didn't want to do but I literally could not switch my brain off and I guess it turned into insomnia and the anxiety and insomnia was just a vicious cycle you know feeding itself and I was not getting the the good rest that I actually needed so I very consciously went down the path of researching and incorporating the beauty of meditation within a nighttime routine and at first I kind of rebelled against a routine because I'm like oh fuck you I'm just gonna do what I want sleep hygiene crock of shit but I gave it a solid six months and honestly within a month of meditating every night the difference was unreal. Yes, I was still um, doing this and also taking the sleeping pill, but I was able to wean myself off the pill. I was on like 10 milligrams and then I broke the pill in half for two weeks and then I went down to a quarter for another two. And by the time I was ready to completely step away from the need of that medication to help me fall asleep, I had embraced what meditation was actually doing to me and calming my, my body naturally that I was able to fall asleep and it was a really beautiful thing. I remember not even a year ago, needing that. And now, yeah, kind of literally patting myself on the back and going, yeah, you fucking changed that. Now I'm like, you have troubles falling asleep? <laughs> try meditating. It, it really fucking works. If you have any issues falling asleep, do try it. Back to the books that I'm reading at the moment. I'm ex experiencing a little bit of issues with my eldest son Steele. I'm not going to go into the details, but it's just a combination of homeschooling and the changes from COVID being between two houses now. And poor little guy has had as much change as I've had over the last two years. And I want to educate myself as much as possible to be the best parent that I can be for him. So a lot of the books I'm currently reading are on parenting and psychology, specifically children's psychology and ways that I can help so the one I just finished reading was called Raising Boys. And the main thing or the point, there was obviously more than one, but the one that stuck with me the strongest, I guess, was the need for positive male mentors in their life and how hard that is to get these days when things like Boy Scouts, oh, there's a million others that I can't think of right now, are kind of becoming less and less where you know, men go off with other men and do shit that will help men learn to be men. Uh, and now they're just like sitting indoors and playing video games. So that uh, between the age of, I think it was six and 14, is really important to have strong role models in their life other than their fathers as well. So this could be grandfathers, it could be a music teacher or a sporting coach, or it could be an uncle, but the, the importance of having a strong male presence in the boys' lives uh, was really highlighted to me. And I enjoyed learning about that. 
One I've just started reading is called How to Not Fuck Up Your Kids Too Much. Um, awesome title. It's like a combination of podcasts. I think there might be 10 within it and they cover different topics and it's really been quite interesting so far. I'm only up to the second one, but <laughs> the title got, uh, got my attention and I look forward to completing that one. I was also lent a few books from a new friend, which I'm very thankful for meeting, and they were all about child psychology and one in particular was learning the love languages um, for children specifically and the most interesting thing that I've gotten out of that book so far was the fact that or the awareness that I give love in a certain way so for me it would be um, physical touch again physical touch doesn't always have to be sexual when it's for my children obviously that's nurturing affectionate it's in no way sexual and it would be um, verbal affirmation would be another way that I give love but the book is highlighting that they may not accept that the way that I'm giving it out. What I mean by that is that their love language is different and the book is going to help me understand what his is and then fill his cup up daily in a way that to him is fulfilling. And I never thought of it like that. It's a really interesting concept to think about. And it's not just between the parental and child relationship. It's within relationships with other people, your romantic relationship, or even with your mother or father or friends, it doesn't matter. If you don't take the time to learn or understand how how they express love and give it to them in that format, you might not be uh, in their eyes giving them the love that they need. And that thought for a moment kind of broke my heart. I'm like, fuck, I'm doing everything I can to show my son's love. I never thought about that before. I'm like, what, what if their version of love is different? So as soon as that concept was made aware to me, I'm like, fuck, I need to read this book. So once I finish that one, I'll definitely bring it up in a future podcast. Okay, let's check uh, my lipstick. I think we need to touch it up a little bit. Oh my God, how cute is this compact? Really digging my makeup today. I haven't done purple in a really long time. Oh. I did say I was going to do an ASMR section here. Oh, it's such a beautifully moisturizing formula. Again, this is Model Rock. How cute is the compact? These are available at my website. This is the Christiana Collaborative Mirror that we did together. It is just cute as fuck. It's got my fingerprints all over it. I'm so proud of this. Okay, so the last topic I want to talk about is a little saucy is presence. Have you had and is it normal for everyone to have? That's a good question. Because I certainly wasn't having it. <laughs> present sex, or not even sex, just present, presentness with other people. Like, yeah, I'm really into being very fucking present with people these days. And in fact, I will shy away from friendships, relationships, anything where someone isn't present because I feel like I give so much that I want that to be reciprocated because it's a really beautiful thing and it's really lovely to see someone's uh, true self and yeah break through the veils of a uh, mask so to speak and really be met with someone's authentic self I'm really loving that in a sexual sense I'm finding presence damn fucking sexy like yeah and again it doesn't even have to be sexual but if you're interested in someone and you have that intense delicious eye contact where you're just literally staring at each other it's electric comment down below if you've experienced that if you haven't if you're not on a spiritual path <laughs> get the fuck on it um there's not a path it's there's you know there's a million paths it's just everyone i think comes to their own spiritual journey through their own life experiences so no one will ever experience the same path. I find that that term can kind of be misconstrued, I guess, by people that haven't um, embraced it or, or experienced any form of spirituality in their life. It kind of like saying, oh, walking the spiritual path kind of implies that there's only one way to do that. But um, I would like to think of it more as a tree breaking out to like a million roots and uh, spreading its wings. And yeah, there's a million ways that it could go and a million things that could bring you to that lifestyle or philosophy or way of embracing life unfortunately for me it was kind of uh through a lot of trauma and change that brought me to that lifestyle you don't have to go through a shitload of trauma uh, to, to want to improve yourself and get into meditation and eat better and exercise you know hopefully just possibly seeing the changes in me even if you're in a really great place in your own life might be like fuck i should 
fucking try this shit. Yeah, meditation, maybe there's something to that. I do know a lot of people though that have literally just crashed and burnt, uh, using that analogy again of the, the phoenix, you know, just being burnt to ashes and rising again. That is literally what happened to me and to many people that I know that are now leading a more spiritual life. Their interest in that has come through them literally breaking. Yeah, some kind of life catastrophe that has made them break and rebuild. And I mean, what happens when you rebuild, it's normally better, right? It's like version two. I feel like the new and improved version of Evelina. I almost find that each time I expand my consciousness a little more or my perception on reality uh, changes, it's like a little death within itself. And I'm no longer the person I was two years ago, but uh, sometimes it can be so quick, the evolution in how I think that it's like, shit, I'm not the same person I was five minutes ago. And that's a beautiful thing. I'm really open to stepping into uh, perceptions that I hadn't previously been open to and just yeah, experiencing newness and being present. So bringing me back to the topic on hand, presence, have you felt that yourself where eye contact is just so penetrative? It's a beautiful thing to play with energy as well. I don't know, comment down below if you've ever experienced that, but the more I come into my own uh, sexuality and understand my own energy and that I emit energy and I am able to receive other people's uh, openness, I guess. It's a really beautiful thing. There's like this interplay that, that happens from the connectiveness of eye contact that is it's quite magical when it, when it comes. Mm, can really uh, take your breath away. So yeah, let me know if you have ever experienced that. It wasn't something that I had experienced too much of at all. Honestly, I kind of thought that connection was just uh, Hollywood and fictitious. And I understand now why I was so in love with, uh, with romance movies, just because I, I hadn't experienced it. So it did seem fictitious. I am a romantic, but I'm also like a, a realist as well. I analyze things and I think the biggest change within myself is my ability to relate to people differently and because I'm working on my own consciousness and being present, I'm attracting people into my life that are also present themselves. So when we do connect, it's <laughs> it can be absolutely mind blowing. And it's so exciting to me because I said it is new. So yeah, have you been lucky enough to, to fall into this type of connection naturally and at a young age because I'm young at heart I'm somewhere between the age of like 22 to 40 I could <laughs> can be anywhere in there but it's yeah definitely something I've experienced uh, just very recently and yeah it's kind of bittersweet because I'm like oh I missed out on almost two decades of this but uh, I'm glad I got it now you know so tell me about your experiences below Okay, that was a very abrupt ending due to a technical difficulty. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode, episode five of Sex, Blood and Rock and Roll. I will be back with you shortly in episode six and I look forward to adding in some questions. So remember to add them in the comments below. Check out my website. I've got a lot of new designs coming out for Danny Divine. I've got the rings that I mentioned in, in episode one. I've got my coffin ring coming out very soon. So head over to my website, www.avelinademori.com. Do we still who fucking says www dot anymore? Just avelinademore.com. Go there, check it out. Support me, support my creativity. And I will see you guys soon. Bye. Hey, I know I just said goodbye, but I, I kind of got more to say. Like, <laughs> this woman never shuts up. Well, there are a few ways to make me shut up, but that's, that's a topic for another podcast. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to say, I've been, if you're listening to the end as well, this is like a little, little ASMR treat. I'll get in real close. I've been working so hard on what is developing and becoming either a LP, EP or album. Any of, any of those will do, but I'm working on some sheer magic. It's really been great to get back into the music. It's a lot heavier than I expected. I can't wait to start to share it with you. Um, I've already arranged video clips with my cinematographer. So yeah, that's going to be coming in the, the months that follow. And I just, I can't fucking wait. It's about damn time. That's all I'm going to say. It's about fucking time. You guys are going to love it.